Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I am Elizabeth Leonard, Library Relations Manager at SAGE, and I am joined this morning by Carol Schutz. And Carol is at Baylor University. Carol started work at Baylor University in 1994 and has worked as the business librarian there since 1997. She has her MLS from the University of North Texas and an MS in Economics from Baylor. Carol works with the students and faculty at Baylor in the areas of accounting and business law, economics, entrepreneurship, finance, information systems, management, marketing, and real estate. So she might be a little busy. Carol and her husband Melvin live in Waco and they have a sphinx cat named Rudy. So please welcome Carol. So Carol and I are going to do a little Q&A and we'll leave time for you all to have questions for us. But if you have a burning question that you can't hold, just raise your hand and I will run over with my microphone. So the first question for you, Carol, is what is entrepreneurship, just so that we're all having the same understanding? So entrepreneurship is taking, it's not just having a business idea, it's taking a business idea from conception to taking it to market. So it's everything that falls in between. Having the business idea, going out and doing, doing the research, deciding how you're going to accomplish your business idea, and then presenting it to the market and getting it out there. Do you think that your business patrons know any of that? Some of the more uh, enterprising ones probably have that knowledge, but uh, the majority of them probably think, well, entrepreneurship's just starting a new business. Okay, now, is that better? Okay. So they just think, I've got an idea for business, and that's it. So then who typically is asking you for help? Uh, well, most of the uh, entrepreneurship classes that we have on campus, they're open to everybody across campus. So you're seeing not only business students, but you're seeing students that might be fashion design, or engineering, or biology, or psychology, or nursing. So the, the business students, if they're an entrepreneurship major, they have uh, a pretty good handle on a lot of what they need to know most of the time. They may get stuck on some of the bigger questions out there, the more hard to find information, but students that aren't business students, a lot of it, it's a mystery to them. So you see them from beginning to end pretty much. And the non-business students, are they in particular majors or is it just all across the campus? When I first started working with them, we saw a lot of, for instance, fashion design students because these are the ones that were designing uh, garments, clothing. They wanted to work in uh, the fashion industry. They might have an idea about starting their own store, and so that's why they were there. Uh, nowadays, we're seeing more of the engineering computer science, the science students, because of the new things in technology that are out there. They're wanting to start uh, some type of online business, whether it is online television or an online radio station or uh, some type of social media project, um, something like that. So it's really shifted away from things like the clothing ideas, um, hey, we want to open a coffee shop, something like that, to the more technology related things. And do you think that that's mimicking a larger trend across campus, or is that more about uh, national trends? I think that it's both a, a trend across campus and something that we're probably looking at nationwide. Because you can look today at things that are going on, and we're definitely more technology heavy than we were in the past. So all of us, you know, uh, who out there doesn't have a smartphone? or an iPad, uh, who's not on Facebook or LinkedIn. You know, we're definitely more into technology than when we were, and 
Uh, I think that more of the innovations, the new things that we're seeing out there are definitely coming out of, of that area, and so that's where we're seeing more of the, the entrepreneurial ideas, both on campus and, and nationwide. Do you have any centers on campus that are intended to support business incubations or your ideas in some way? We do. Um, we have, uh, in the last um, what, five or six years, acquired an old building and re renovated it. It's not directly on campus, but it's close. Um, it's our Baylor Research and Innovation, or yeah, Innovation Collaborative, and it is a place where we have uh, labs out there for uh, engineering uh, areas. So there are engineering labs out there. There are labs for uh, some of the sciences, I believe, out there. So like physics, for instance. Uh, we also have uh, the business accelerator over there. So it's called Launch. And it's out there to work uh, not only with businesses in the Waco area, but uh, nationwide. And in fact, it's also a big part of uh, a particular class that we have on campus is the I-5 program that goes to China every summer and works with uh, businesses over in China. So it's tied into the launch accelerator there as well. And uh, they do uh, some really good work in working with businesses out there and uh, providing this type of service. Do you have any uh, direct contact with the business people who are working with, I think you called it launch? Or are you working specifically with the, the students on campus or both? Uh, typically, I work mainly with the students and all. So they have uh, student consultants through launch where uh, if a business wants help with something, they can sign up and get a student consultant who works with that business and helps them with things. So typically, I hear from the student consultants uh, They'll call and, and ask, you know, where can we find certain type of information or where can I go and look and develop a, a company list of uh, a certain type, things like that. So it comes a lot through uh, the students that are connected directly with, with Baylor. Do you find that there's a difference between the questions that you get from your business students yes and the questions that you get from a business person, either who is trying to make a change to their existing business or who is trying to start a new one. Okay, some of the information overlaps because sometimes they might be looking for the same thing, you know, if they're looking for information about their industry and wanting to, to check that out. So the industry information might be across the board, but with the students, uh, you're looking, uh, particularly the ones that aren't business related, you're looking for pretty much the full spectrum of, of information. So they might be, you know, what is the, the industry like? And then they wanted to know about, you know, where can I find out about my competition and who they are and what are the consumers like and how do I figure out who my consumer base is and, you know, how do I do that? And where is the, the, uh, for instance, the student consultants over at launch or the business people that might come in, they might have a very specific question that they're needing an answer for. And so in a lot of cases, it's more uh, detailed information. They have a very specific thing they're wanting to look at. And sometimes it's hard to find that if it's something very, very specific. You know, sometimes you have to tell them, well, there's not a report specifically on, on that item that we might have to go and look for articles and find out what's going on and what the, the trends or issues are and go that way, you know, to take the place of a report that we can't find. So a lot of times they have something that that's they're looking for is very, very specific to what they need. I'm wondering, and you might not know the answer to this, do you think that the students or the business people are more persistent in getting to an answer? Like, it, does one of them just like throw up their hands and give up? I don't know, I think both of them are pretty persistent. Particularly, I, I think if I have to get an award to one, it'd probably be the students, because some of those students are, are pretty, pretty persistent in looking for what, what they need. Um, I think some of 
the non-business students might be the ones that, that they kind of tend to, if you tell them something's not out there, then they're more likely to give up earlier than the business, but the business students, they're, they're like a bulldog on a bone. They hang on to that thing until, I mean, you cannot shake them off of it sometimes. They're determined that they're going to find something on it. And, you know, even if you go and tell them, you know, hey, we've looked everywhere. We've looked everywhere I know to look. You know, I've, I've questioned my reps about it for, on certain things. It's just not out there. And still, you know, they're, they're still wanting to go after it. Some of the business people are, are like that, but they're, you know, they're, they're I think, a little more willing that if you convince them that you put in a good faith effort to find something and you're just not finding it or what you're finding, uh, they're going to have to to buy what they need, then, you know, they're, they're a little more to, willing to go that way. And then in terms of the length of time that you might spend with a student, are you seeing a student for a, a project that lasts for a week or do you say them over the course of a year? And then my, my sort of coordinated question with that is how real are the projects that a student does? Okay, uh, depending on what the student is, you know, whether they're a business or non-business, you usually see them over the course of the semester because a lot of them, they're, they're taking the class for the semester and once the semester's over, the project's done, they get the grade and they go on. Now, some of them, if it's an entrepreneurship major and they've got a business idea and it's something that they really plan on, on taking to market, you will see them over the course of, of their time there at, at school and all. And there are some of those that they do that because some of them, you know, when they come in and meet with you for the first time and they tell you what their business idea is, you think, why do you want to, why do you want to do that? I mean, are you, have you really thought about this? And is that what you really want to do? But some of them actually come up with some, some good ideas that actually have gone out and, and become businesses. Uh, we have a business that's a little ways off of campus that they uh, got the idea of where they um, have opened it, a shop where they uh, either rent or sell uh, things like bicycles. So if you want a bike uh, around the, the downtown area along the, the river and, and do that, and if you just want the bike for you know, a day or something, then they, they will do that. And they've got other things there in the, the store that they sell as well, but it's all dealing with athletic equipment. Um, I was telling Elizabeth about we had one uh, pair of students that they saw a need on campus that, you know, in the fall, students move in, they move all their stuff into their dorm room, you know. Over the course of the year, they gather more stuff, so they actually leave with more stuff than they came in with. And some of them, you know, they're, they're going to be returning to campus in the fall, and they really don't want to pack all of that stuff home and have to bring it back. So they came up with the idea, they have the boxes with the, the students can pack their stuff up in, they store it over the summer and the students can then, you know, they've got their stuff there and they can come, you know, move back into their room. And it's, I think, really kind of a, a, a good idea. It fills a need on campus that n no one's thought about before, but there, there are ideas like that that you either uh, how the students that come back and tell you, you know, that, that was, you know, great information. What you gave me really helped me. You know, my business is, you know, I think it's going to do well. And you like to hear those feedback stories there where they actually come and tell you that what you did helped them. And they actually turned it into a real business instead of, you know, it's just something they did for the semester and they turned it in, they got the grade and they, you know, that's the la last you ever hear of them and everything. So it, it's, um, good to have those experiences where you hear back from your students and you know that what you did is, is helping somebody. So did they actually do the business, the storage business? Yeah. So it's real? Yeah. That's cool. Okay, so getting into more of the, the details of how to do the research, do you have recommended steps? Uh, I do for the one, the one class that I have where I actually go in and, and meet with the class and get them started and show them the library resources. It's the class where you have a lot of non-business uh, people in it 
And so we've kind of got a, a, a step we go through in doing this where we start out and the first thing I said, you know, we need to look at, at your industry. You know, look at your industry, see how it's doing. Is it something that's growing? Is it something that is not doing well right now? Is it saturated? Are there openings and opportunities in it? That type of thing. And the first kind of roadblock we hit is, you know, talking about your industry code because with 40 people in the room, two of them are business majors, the rest are from across campus and you start talking about a NAICS code and their little eyes glaze over and you have to stop and have the, the conversation about what an industry code is and why it matters. And so we make it through that part. Uh, we go and, and look at, um, can I man mention database yeah, names? Okay, we go and look at IBIS World and look at the industry reports and show them what they need to look at in there. Uh, we also go and look at BizMiner because it has uh, success and failure rates, for instance, for uh, startups. And we talk about some of the things in, in BizMiner, why that is important. Uh, we have a talk about consumers and how they need to know about their consumers. If they've got a product where they're targeting a particular consumer group, you know, how do you find out numbers? Uh, how do you find out what consumers like? So looking at Mintel reports, for instance, about consumers there and what their preferences and thoughts on certain things are. And, you know, just going through like that and, and uh, well, we need to look for articles on issues and challenges too and see what's going on in your industry out there. Uh, we also go in, look at, for instance, Reference USA, not because I'm looking for numbers or anything like that in there, but uh, we're going in more to gauge the, the competition in their areas. So, for instance, if they're thinking about putting in a business there in Waco, uh, let's go in, look for the number of businesses in Waco that might be your competition. And then the button for the map it, where you can go in and map where the locations are, you can look and see where are they located through town. So, what you don't want to do is go and put a business on the same corner that there are already three or four, you know, up and down the, the two block area there and, you know, and go into an area that's already saturated with your business. And so it's just kind of walking them through the progress like that and all and getting them to think about things. You know, when we're looking at the IBIS World reports, we talk about what are barriers to entry. And we do a little thing and where we stop and think, you know, what does it take to start a business? So if you've got a business idea, you're thinking about op opening a restaurant. What does it take to open a restaurant? What do you need to open a restaurant? And so we go and we think about, well, you know, you, you've got a restaurant, you're fixing food, what do you need in the kitchen? What are all the items that go in the kitchen? Okay, we've got that taken care of. You've got the area out there for the patrons. You know, what do you need to serve your patrons? And so it's everything from having tables and chairs to plates and silverware and you think, see, what is all that gonna cost you? So it costs a lot to get started with the restaurant. All right, what if you're gonna start a dog walking business? What do you need to start a dog walking business? You know, basically a dog and a leash. And how much is that gonna cost you? So it's just, you know, getting to think about certain things, what they really need, because, you know, it's not just, I've got this idea and I go out and do it. From my own experience, and you can tell me whether or not things have changed since I was a business librarian, those questions are really detailed. And you mentioned earlier that there are those moments where you can't find the information that you're looking for. Since you've got your, your bulldog students and they're willing to keep going with you, maybe past you, what are your tips and tricks to get them through to that pot of gold that they're looking for? And make sure you it. Okay, well, one of the first things I mentioned to them is that, that sometimes you need to think outside the box. Okay, so it may not be that something's gonna be found in a database that we subscribe to through the library there. So you have to think of, of other things. So who out there might care about what you're doing? 
Um, I told Elizabeth about the, the, the backyard chicken idea that we had. So, you know, about having the business idea where they had the, the, the chickens that they ran out to people to have in the back, keep in the backyard so they had the fresh eggs. So there's not like an industry report on backyard chickens. So where do you go to find this information? And it's that there are organizations out there for people that keep chickens. And it's going to something like that that's going to help you find the information. Same thing with the, the when I first started meeting with the students that I had one, his business idea was, you know, people sometimes want to have swimming pools taken out of their backyard that they don't want them anymore. And so it's not like we could find in a database numbers for swimming pools that have been filled in. But there is an organization out there for a swimming pool people that put swimming pools in, that they actually keep track of the number of swimming pools that people remove from their backyard. So we were able to, to connect this student with a, a fellow from the organization that said that he could help him. So thinking outside the box is big. Uh, sometimes it's going and finding your information through one of the, the government databases. So, you know, using the census, using the BLS, using things like that to find what you need. And you know, just just being persistent about that, and looking and seeing, you know, what your competition might be doing. Where are they? You know, what are they doing? What's going on with them? So looking at uh, looking at a at a bigger company, a bigger group, somebody similar to doing what you're doing. Look and see, you know, what's been going on with them and how they've handled things. So it's it's just kind of getting away from the beaten path sometimes and going and using some non-traditional sources to, to find your information and looking for things that way. And sometimes finding that there really is a backyard chicken organization, yes. which might be a surprise. <laughs> that was the last of my questions for you. Is there anything else that you, like words of advice that you have for anyone who is maybe new to doing business reference who might be intimidated by it? Just to, to hang in there, be persistent. Uh, students will amaze you with, with the ideas that they will come up with, you know, new things that they, they think of that they want to do. And uh, sometimes you have to get them to think about, are you going to have enough information there to work on this? And is this a, a reasonable thing to be doing? But most of the time, you know, it's just be creative. You know, you, you have to be inventive sometimes to look for places to find your information. But, you know, be persistent.